Welcome to Chem 309 Intro Part 3. In this um, video, we are going to begin to look at matter and how it's related to measurements. So let's go ahead and get started. So when we stutter, study matter and energy, we do that by making measurements. Now measurements are always going to have some degree of uncertainty, right? And that, that means we don't know for sure. There's actually quite a bit of guessing in science, which can be a surprise when we're new. All right. So where does this uncertainty come from in the measurements? Well, it comes from a bunch of places, right? It depends on the accuracy and the precision of our equipment, the measuring devices, also human error, and there can be variation in what we're measuring, right? So there's a lot of factors that come into play. So we're not going to dig too deeply in here, um, but I would like to, um, it's important that we can make the distinction um, in the scientific world between precision and accuracy. When we go to a, a dictionary, it basically gives the same definition, but in the world of science, these terms are used differently. So let's make sure we know the difference. When we think about precision, Really, we want to think about reproducibility. Okay, and so this means within, within the data set, right? How reproducible is the data? So an example here would be that maybe we have a bow and arrow, and if we think about the bullseye as the true value, and our measurements are very precise, right? We're hitting the same part of the target every time. So this would be described as high precision because it's very reproducible. But if our true value is here, we would say low accuracy. And the reason why we would say low accuracy, because the definition of accuracy in the science community is the closeness to the true or accepted value. Okay? So that means hitting the bullseye. So if we're accurate, it means we're hitting the bullseye. And many times, if we're accurate, it also means we're precise. So here we have high accuracy and high precision. And um, understanding the difference here um, can give us the ability to call bullshit. Because what will happen is many times someone will have very high precision and they'll be, try to be very persuasive that they should be believed because they have high precision. But high precision doesn't always mean high accuracy. So we need to look at these two together, right? And so when we're looking at precision, we're looking at the data itself. When we're looking at accuracy, we're comparing to this true value. Now let's bring in a couple more important concepts and then we'll tie it all together. Alrighty, so exact numbers, these are the numbers like that we would see in math class. These are, these are numbers that just drop out of the sky and they have no uncertainty. There is no question mark in these numbers anywhere, all right? And the reason why is because they're either counted or defined. And you might be wondering, how do you define a number? All right. Well, because we're going to be doing lots of measurements, we're going to need to use units, right? Because the units tell us what we're measuring. And so unit systems, right? If we're in the English system, the English system says there's 12 inches is exactly one foot, All right? Or if we go to the metric system, right? The metric system will tell us that there's 100 centimeters in one meter. So these are defined by the unit system. So those would be considered exact. Now, if we switch from metric to English, those are different unit systems, no longer exact. Just like if we we're translating from one language to another, there's always the nuances. We will not have very many exact numbers in this class. 
we are going to live here. This is chemistry world. Because we're going to be making a bunch of measurements, and measurements always have that uncertainty, right? So an inexact number has uncertainty, and that's okay, right? We're going to make some guesses, and the reason why is because every time we measure, we're going to always guess the last digit, or we're going to do some kind of estimation. And that's part of the journey. All right, so, um, so as we, um, you're going to watch a bunch of videos and before the next class. And the reason why is because we got to learn more about measurements. And so um, there, every measurement's going to have a number, right? So this number is going to have a size. Is it big? Is it little? Is there a lot? Is there a few? But we know that there's also going to be an uncertainty in that number because we have to make some guesses. All right. Well, chemistry looks at all of the universe. So some numbers will be huge. Some numbers will be small. Some numbers will be kind of normal, right? So we, we got to make sure that we can do scientific notation with our calculator. So before, between now and the next class, you're going to um, make sure that you're on your game with science. Oops. Scientific notation. Get that typo out of there. Right? Okay, and then for this uncertainty to communicate how do we, is this a very precise number that we have a lot of confidence, uh, precise and accurate number that we have a lot of confidence in, or does it have low accuracy and low precision? And so for that, we're going to need to learn about something called significant figures. And significant figures is a lot of syllables, so we'll start calling that sig figs right away. Okay? And then beyond that, we need to look at the unit. Because if I go, it's 42. 42 what? 42 feet, 42 ounces, 42 milliliters. The unit tells us what we measured. So like the reading in this class is memorizing the basic knowledge, looking at the prefixes, the suffixes, the stems. Um, the reading is being able to read a question and figure how to set up a calculation and solve it. And the units are going to be super helpful with figuring out how to set up our, um, our answers, our calculations. So let's do one little page to check for understanding and see how you're doing with this information so far. So um, here we have the accepted or true value of a distance is 27.2 meters. And now we have three sets of data. All right. So take a minute and look at the data and think about your understanding of precision and accuracy. Evaluate the data and decide which data set has greater precision and which data set has greater accuracy. So I'll take a breath and give you a minute to do those answers. Okay, so we remember precision is all about being reproducible. So we're looking at the data itself, right? So if we look at data set A, it's bouncing around in the ones place. But when we look at B, the 29s are all the same. It's bouncing in the tenths place. And C is all over the place. So B is the most, has the greatest precision. It's the most reproducible. But when we go to accuracy, now we're comparing with the accepted value. So now we want to look at the average. And when we look at the average, we see that data set A is closer to our accepted value. So with data set B, they must mind to make, like, make a small adjustment. And then it could probably be both the most accurate and the most precise. But right now, there's some sort of bias in this data. All right, and a little bit more of a plug for units 
is they're going to help us translate word problems into calculations. So when we're reading a word problem, we really want to think about the physical context of what's going on, right? So if we're reading a word problem and it says 42 grams, we're looking at that gram and what kind of it, what is it, right? Grams would be mass. We here we have 75 milliliters. So when we look at milliliters, we recognize, oh, that is a volume, okay? Now, when we see milliliters, we can infer what kind of, what's the physical state? Most likely, this would be the volume of a liquid. It's not required, but when we have milliliters, that would intend to apply a liquid. And that's gonna give you a hint here. If we look at 21 centimeters cubed, is that a mass, a volume, or a length? It's also a volume, right? Because it's cubed. Remember we talked about that the volume is the 3D space. So when we're looking at solids, if it has a friendly shape, right, we can, when we want to do the volume, right, it's the length times the width times the height. So if those were, are all in centimeters, centimeters cubed. So it's important to look at the entire unit and that's gonna help us figure out how to do word problems. So alrighty, so that wraps up this video. And um, now between now and the next class, you wanna make sure to watch all the videos that are listed and actively take notes. Bring those video lecture notes to class and we'll start working on some in-class homework problems.